a couple of years ago, uh, something fundamentally changed in the semiconductor industry. That is that um, actually the cost it took to manufacture transistors, you know, started going up. For decades, we have been used in, you know, seeing the cost of manufacturing going down. And actually, at uh, specifically at the 28 nanometer node afterward there, we saw that um, the cost was going up. And of course, that created a lot of concern and havoc in the industry. And a, a lot of people started questioning, you know, what that would mean. Uh, one of the things, of course, that would mean, that means is that the 28 nanometer you know, uh, dimensions, uh, that node is definitely going to be the workhorse in the industry for a long time. So that's definitely um, an important message. Now, <clears throat> but what I would like to state is that even more than the manufacturing cost, and by the way, there is debate going on whether you know, this manufacturing cost is indeed you know, go going um, you know, to continue to, to increase. Uh, but what people definitely uh, agree upon is that um, the design cost of chips is going up dramatically because of the complexity uh, that you have to deal with. And this is uh, an analysis that was done by IBS, I believe. And they questioned a lot of companies in what was the cost in designing a new chip in, in a 28 nanometer uh, node. Um, and they came to a, an average design cost of about $170 million. Now think about that, what that means, right? That if you're uh, an average company that has a 20% you know, R&D uh, spending, 20% of, of revenue, it means that that chip better generates revenue of more than $800 million, right? Um, and that's, that's quite a challenge. I remember, now that's a long time ago, in the good old days of Semiconductor, I had a chat with the CEO of, at that time, Philips Semiconductor, which doesn't exist anymore, perhaps, you know, because some good reasons. But, you know, he was saying, you know, typically one out of seven of the chips that we are designing is really becoming a success. It was 20 years ago. But that's definitely something that's just impossible to assume these days. You cannot afford that. Now, another thing that's also a consequence of that is, if, if you're a company that making you know a billion dollar revenue or less, uh, you pretty much almost bet the future on the, of the company every time you go and design a new a new chip. Um, so that's a very challenging situation. In that you can have it right, but you might not have it right all the time. And so um, there are consequences for that. And some of these consequences you see here. This is an older chart. But it, it had all the collection of data. I kind of did some anecdotal checking uh, with the current situation. But this shows you the operating margins of uh, the top 16 uh, ASSP semiconductor companies, so the companies that are building you know, application-specific uh, uh, processors. And what you see is that more than half of them in that time frame were consecutive you know, consecutively uh, over the years, we're actually losing money. And in all fairness, if you look at the, you know, the margins, it's probably like three or four of them that were doing pretty well and that where you would put some trust in their future. And then you had the middle range. So it shows that, you know, clearly there uh, was and is a challenge you know, on some of the business models um, in the semiconductor industry. Now, you know, uh, if you haven't uh, seen the news lately, um, that has been clearly has led to a lot. All these, these economic uh, factors have definitely led to some huge activity in the mergers and acquisitions field. Companies that are really going after economies of scale in order to be able to afford the large R&D and design costs to build their products. And to put that in perspective, in the last year alone, and this slide only has, I think, the last six months, but in the last year alone, more than a hundred billion dollar worth of uh, mergers and acquisitions has happened in the semiconductor industry. So uh, it's clear that there is uh, a disruption going on in the industry and uh, that the whole economic aspect of the semiconductor industry is changing. Uh, and that there is a tremendous consolidation 
happening. And in many cases, people look at consolidation as, as a sign of a, of a maturing industry. Um, and the question is now, okay, what, what does that mean for the future?